All right, this is one of those deals where you get a compromise. Or you have to compromise. Now, with the lid back on, you notice the hatch won't close. These two, these two crystals are up too high. Now, there's, there's two reasons they're up too high. First of all, my bottom, let me take this off. My bottom uh, mail jack on the bottom of the, of the project itself is a little bit, it sits up a little bit taller than an actual one. If you could get the old style, it sits, uh, it would allow us to go down an eighth of an inch more. And then if you use the, uh, this type from underneath, they show it, they show it mounted on top. Okay. If you mount it on top, see it alongside mine, it's too, it's up too much. You'd have to mount it underneath and then you'd be able to close the hatch. I think I put this in there uh, one more time, just in case I, I didn't get it in the frame. You want to put this, this type uh, connector, a uh, crystal socket underneath this way. Okay. They show it like this, like this, the lid wouldn't close. Okay. But it's all a matter of, uh, you know, taking measurements and their they lid might close because they use a different mail connector. I can't, you, some of the stuff you can't get anymore. So I basically used what I could get. And this is how, this is how the tube sits horizontal and it, it, it prevents you from putting this tube in and this, an original transmitter untouched is 24 volts. So this tube would get its 12 volts from here. And this tube would get 24, uh, 12 volts and they add up there in series be 24 volts. So I have to make a socket with a resistor to you to be, act as a ballast resistor. So this tube thinks it's in series with another tube. Cause as you see, you can't plug, you can't plug in the tube that was in that socket. Okay. Okay. They sell you pull the sockets out. See, but their, their project, they've rewired the transmitter for 12 volt operation. Okay, so it'd just be a matter of running the hot down. And they don't show the hot for the filament connected. They, 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 they have it up. They have it just leaning there. So I guess you got to go figure out which one on your chassis is hot and then run a wire to it. But I just wanted to show you, just in case you, you, you come along and you say, yeah, I'm going to build that thing. And if you do build it, um, steel. Okay. And, and when I cut the hole, let me show you closer. When I cut the hole for the socket, okay, it really made it flimsy, you know. But if you stick it in there, and you just use the two crystal, the, the two frequencies A and B, you know, and then you could always take this out and change the crystals. But it, it's this is more of an experiment, and uh, if as you if you break in these sockets, you probably could change the front one, this one here through the hatch. The back one I don't know about, but I just wanted to show you how it came out. And uh, you know, like I said, if you if you use this type, come from underneath. That's if you use this type mail connector. Okay, you're not going to be able to find the one that they used. Or well, you might have it. You know, you might be one of those guys that's been hoarding stuff since the 30s. But that that's really low profile. Okay, because most of it sits up inside where the wiring goes. See, mine, mine gives me that extra wiring area. You know, as I was building, I'm saying, I, I really wanted two, two crystals. I wanted two frequencies. Okay. And one will probably be, um, the color burst crystal. Uh, I can't, I can't remember. It's 3.97, 3.79. Well, anyway, it would be nice to, I do have one of those crystals, but it, it doesn't have the same size pins, but it's from a color television set. And that's one of the crystals that the QRP guys use. They use an old uh, television uh, color burst crystal on their QRP rigs. But I just want to show you how it's coming out. And I know some people are into, into seeing how things are constructed. And uh, it took a while. You know, I have to drill a series of holes. Uh, I guess I can show you that. In order to cut a hole, 
in the chassis for that socket. And if you put the socket on top, you're going to have to really cut out the, the aluminum and it'll make it even flimsier. And where do they show it? Oh, they use one of those round, they use one of those round uh, sockets that I do have, but I wasn't going to make this any more flimsier than it is. But it is what it is. But uh, I want to tell you, originally I had the, um, the Greeley punches and they're weird. They're two sections, they're two halves. They're actually a die. And you, you drill a small hole down the center in the spot where you want to put the hole for the, uh, the tube socket. Drill like a quarter inch hole. And then you put one side, one half on one side of the chassis. The other half, there's a bolt that goes through it. And you tighten it down. And this cutter goes, gets pulled through into the, uh, st into the die. And I used it like on one or two projects. And then it sat. The set of three. I actually got them at um, General Tool. And I said to the guy, uh, you sell Greeley punches? He goes, we're discontinuing them. He says, that's a set for 18 bucks. He says, they were normally... Say 25. Well, anyway, I, I, I laid my money down. I brought them home. Used them several times. And I noticed they were good steel. But I noticed they were starting to get uh, like a little bit of rust on them. And uh, I took them to the next Sam flea market. And I put them out there. And the guy was flipping out over them. You know, because at, at that point, you basically couldn't find uh, Greeley punches that cheap. For cutting tube sockets or the uh, to cut the chassis so the tube socket would fit but you know I'm stuck using this type male connector okay I really like this light <laughs> so I basically this male connector that's all I can use and I had an old octal socket and I had uh, crystal sockets and I had an on off switch you know so it sticks out above the cabinet I would like it to be perfect I would like to make this bracket out of steel, have the uh, actual uh, male connector that they call for, but that's not going to happen. You know, I could be on eBay until the cows come home, and then you know the person's going to want a lot of money for it. Everything on eBay, oh, these crystals are up there. They used to be a uh, dollar each at the ham flea market. Then they went to $5. Each. Now they're at $18. Okay, so everything is going up, jumping up in price. But at some point, all the people that want this stuff are going to start dying off. And then the stuff's going to start hitting the landfill. But just want to give you an update what's going on. I know some people are into this stuff. You know, how would you do it? But again, I want to say, you're not allowed to operate this transmitter uh, in VF, uh, variable frequency oscillator, VFO mode. This has a really stable VFO in it. But you can accidentally go out of the... Uh, out of the 80 meter band with it. It does go below, uh, it goes, be, I think it goes down to three mega cycles. All right. So in other words, you could, you could go off frequency with it or it's not calibrated and you go off frequency with it. That's why they want you to use a crystal oscillator as a beginner. So this is the article, you know, it's from C, uh, CQ magazine way, way back. Uh, it's also in the, uh, the command radio modification book. This, this is actual thing. This one here, it doesn't say it's CQ. Well, anyway, you can convert this over. And like I said, once you unplug this, you can put it back. You just put the tubes back in, and now it's back as being a VFO rig. And some people were using this just as a VFO to feed a transmitter that was crystal controlled. See, once you get your license, you're higher up in the licenses. Um, you can you can use a VFO, and they were using this unit as a VFO to uh, supply the oscillator signal for like like a Heath kit that needed crystal inputs, and that's 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 why this this is this used to be in big demand, not anymore. You get these for forty bucks now, you know, uh, unbodged or semi botched for forty. Uh, the ones for seventy five, I wouldn't trust them. Okay, just because it's more money, it doesn't mean that somebody's fat fingers haven't been in there. And I'm still looking for the um, the article that told people to take that roller inductor out of the front here. Here come we in frame. There are I see them on eBay. They're missing this roller inductor in the front. Okay, so there's some something out there that tells you how to convert this unit to something else. 
and they tell you to take that roll inductor out. And it could be for if you convert it to um, uh, 40 meters or higher. And what you should do is just buy a different command uh, transmitter. But that's about it. That's where I am. Okay, is that it? All right, that's it.